Okay, so like a real anthropologist, I need to provide some context for my claimed missing link before I actually explain it. Back in the 1960s and 70s, mecha anime were simple, episodic anime series about a boy given an absurdly powerful giant robot and defeating a new giant monster every week. Pretty simple. Then, in 1979, Mobile Suit Gundam came along and changed things. Mecha were now realistic pieces of military hardware, piloted by three-dimensional characters in bloody, complicated wars that felt more like Vietnam than G.I. Joe. The mecha genre then quickly split into two neat subgenres. Shows in the old over-the-top style were now super robot mecha, while the gritty shows were now real robot series. But, like most innocent characters in a real robot show, this didn't last. In the mid-90s, shows like Neon Genesis Evangelion and Martian Succession Odesco subverted and parodied both super robot and real robot tropes. And then in the past decade, shows like Gurren Lagann and Darling in the Franks began integrating three-dimensional characters and gritty storylines into shows with the over-the-top fighting and mecha designs of the super robot genre. These days, that simple subgenre division isn't so clear. Okay, all this is pretty well known, but there's one important show in this evolution that never gets talked about, in my opinion. And it was made by the creator of Mobile Suit Gundam, Yoshiyuki Tomino. That show is Overman King Gainer from 2002, and I'm not the only one hyping this up. Tomino himself stated in an interview that he intended Overman King Gainer to revolutionize the mecha genre. So what is this show? It's an anime TV series set in a future where so little habitable land remains that humanity is in semi-permanent exile, living in vast mobile cities that trundle from one frozen area of the world to another. And of course, some areas are more dangerous than others as governments vie for control and power, thus leading to mecha fighting each other. The protagonists are members of one mobile city who rebel against this system and set off for their ancestral homeland. They hail from all across the class spectrum, from a preteen princess struggling with her duties to an esports champion turning his skills to piloting a mecha. Yeah, in 2002. So this is clearly a real robot premise. It's high concept and deals with real world issues. The characters are also, while not particularly deep, definitely multidimensional, caught between multiple duties and desires. So this would seem to be a real robot show. Okay. So far, so typical of Tomino. But what's not so typical is the mecha and the mecha animation. The mecha in Gainer are partly organic, leading to a wonderful fluidity in their motion. They run and fly in a way much more reminiscent of real animals and people than clunky military hardware. Not only that, I don't think it's a spoiler to say that later mecha can morph their bodies in incredibly creative shapes. They even hired one animator specifically to animate one particular mecha's rubber-like movement to make it look consistently weird. As a result, the mecha combat in Overman King Gainer evolves into a clear super robot style, where elastic humanoids are throwing each other across the battlefield in wild fights. And that is my contention. This is the super robot visual style layered on top of a real robot cast and story. You can draw a clear line from this show to Gurren Lagann five years later and Darling in the Franks ten years after that. This is the missing link in the evolution of the mecha genre.